de Global Latin Factor Podcast. Welcome back, welcome back to another episode of the Global Latin Factor Podcast. The Global Latin Fa Factor Podcast, the one place where you can find all your information regarding to Latinos, Latinos contributing to the world, all the contributions that came from Latin America, every single Latino culture we're going to touch on. And this is going to be your one-stop place where you can find information about different things from food, music, and anything that you can think of as far as your everyday life there's a most likely is some kind of latino contribution that we have and uh i'm gonna we're gonna tell you all about it here the latin factor the global latin factor and today we are gonna do we are celebrating women's international day is it women's international day or women's war day which one is that one today okay international women's international day today and we're bringing you a very powerful latina dr ellen Lori ochoa She's from Mexican descent. I uh, did a lot of research on her, fi finding out everything that I could, and, and uh, some of the more interesting things that I found out about her. So, so, so you know how we're here in the Global Latin Factor, we're trying to bring awareness to all the Latinos that, that made contributions, especially on the individual in the individual level, right? Because a lot of the times where you're growing up, uh, well, depending on, on the area that you're from, you might not see any kind of uh, influence or somebody to look up, like a role model, right? So if you've never seen, and again, everybody's mind works different, but to me, a lot of the things that I did in my life was if, if I can see somebody do it or done it before, then most likely gave me like, a, I don't know, some kind of sense deep inside me that I might be able to go ahead and do it too, right? So her, uh, she, she really didn't think she would be an astronaut. It wasn't her goal. It wasn't something that she imagined. But whenever she saw Sally Ride, the first woman to ever make it to space and get to that level, and, and she realized that you can get there, you know, it did, it did do something for her in her life eventually. So she was born, Ellen, Dr. Ochoa, was born on May 10, 1958. She's 62 years old. She graduated from Gross Mount High School, attended San Diego State University, and she also went to Stanford. She was born in Los Angeles, California. That's right. Her parents, her grandparents immigrated from Sonora, Mexico to Arizona, and later on, they moved to California And that is where she grew up in La Mesa, California. That's where she grew up. Now, okay, they have her. They have her listed as as the first Hispanic to woman to make it to space. But technically, she doesn't speak Spanish. So, by the definition of if you, which again, I, I just I know that you know Latino Hispanic is just something that they put on on the census to differentiate uh make difference as far as what is what but at the end of the day she she doesn't know spanish she doesn't speak spanish so technically she falls under the latino uh you know to me she falls under being a latino the first latina to make it to space because she doesn't know spanish and, and it's not because she didn't want to so back in the days you know for latinos in california especially there was a there was a lot of racism and and her dad actually discouraged her from actually learning spanish or knowing Spanish, or, or practicing Spanish. She was a lighter Mexicana, lighter color. Her eyes were light, but at the same time, you know, th we're talking about days when, like, the Latinos were not allowed on public pools, maybe towards the end before they cleaned the pools because they thought that they were going to dirty the pools. You know what I mean? Things like that. That's the, th the kind of uh, lie that she lived. So I'm pretty sure that she wanted to go ahead and, and learn her language, but and I see why her dad didn't encourage her to learn or discourage her to learn Spanish for the same reason that she didn't want her to be bullied, picked on, or, or you know, different things that the, the way that happened back when she was growing up. So she was selected by NASA in 1990 to uh, be the first Latina astronaut in 1991 is when she made it now so i saw a lot of interviews about everything that she had to go through again after she ha she got her doctorate that's when she really began to take an interest before then she would she played the flute so that's mostly the things that she focused on and, and and technology and going to school once she got her doctorate that's when she decided to 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 put her application in to become an astronaut now Uh, you f at first, 
try, you don't succeed, then you try and try again, right? A lot of things happen whenever you persistent about what you want so she put in her application the first time they didn't accept her so it's easy to say whenever something doesn't go your way to be like you know what ah, it didn't happen for me you know i just you know it's not gonna be a thing especially being a woman especially at that time still being a, a male dominated area whether the first woman made it to space or not she still is just a latina not only a female she's a latina female and she could be discouraged and say, you know what, I, I put it in, I gave it a shot, I tried to be an astronaut, it didn't happen for me, let's, move, let's go ahead and move on. But nope, she stayed, continued renewing her application. She actually made it to NASA in a research program, so she went into work for NASA even after she was turned down to be an astronaut for the astronaut program. And then three years later, eventually she was accepted to be one. So imagine the things that sometimes we go through life as far as like giving it a try one time and then just giving up and not trying again. You know, what would have happened if she would not continue doing the things that she's doing? She would never made it to space, you know. So it's, it's a, it's, it speaks volumes. Dice mucho al cuando te dicen no, seguir insistiendo, when they tell you no, to con continue to insist if that's what you really want to do. And one of the things that that she credits her mom, and, and I've seen it in a couple of books that uh, in interviews, is that the, the, her mom always told her, if, if you work hard enough, your dreams will come true. If you work hard enough, your dreams will come true. And she was a firm believer on it, especially getting a doctrine. You have to put in a lot of school. And when she gave an example of how is it to train to be an astronaut, what does it go, what is it included, what does it entail, what happens, oh, it's almost like going to school, she said. You put in the work, you get tested, sometimes you test yourself, sometimes you got to test, uh, they test you, and then you just got to, you know, put in work. And I'm pretty sure it wasn't easy. Think about it, you got to go to space. <laughs> you have to go to space eventually. You have to learn different things that you've never done before, how to eat continue to exercise so you know your muscles and i've never been to space but everything all this information what i gather you got to exercise you got to eat a certain way everything pretty much everything that you do regularly here on earth is not the same so you have to all, all that work you have to do with that and not to mention all the things that you have to just learn how to how things work to be able to be out there so again she was selected uh asked Al Alan Ochoa received the, her master's in science doctrine at Stanford University. So that's where she got her doctorate, and that's where she made the decision. She, a mission specialist in flight engineer Ochoa is a veteran of four space flights, logging in more than 950 hours in space. 950 hours in space. Can you, uh, can you, uh, Leo, can you go ahead and tell me how, how many, uh, how many days is that? 950 hours? How many days, months, years is that? I can't really think right now for that part. Ochoa has received numerous awards, including NASA's Exceptional Service Medal in 1997, Outstanding Leadership Medal in 1995, and Space Flight Medals in 2002, 2099, 1994, and 1993. Besides being a researcher, astronaut, She's also an engineer and an inventor, and of course, a classical flutist. What's up? 39.5 39 days? Mm -hmm. 39.5 days in space. Some of you can't be out of your house for more than a week. Imagine being in space for a whole month. That's a lot. Her and her husband live in Texas. She's also, again, has three, holds three patents for optical systems and has several you know has several technical program uh documents that she have contributed she's also an outspoken advocate for girls in mentoring entering stem if you don't know what stem is that science technology engineering and mathematics so for these fields even at, in her time there was not a lot of females that were encouraged to even whenever she 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 told her one of, i believe she, in one of the the interviews or one of the videos I saw is that she told her professor well her prof one of her professors told her well, this is a, a male this is a male like area you know this is a male ran you know industry like men are the ones that go to space not not women 
And she goes, okay, well, if, if I can't go to space, then I'll just work on the things that they work. I work on the on the spaceships, right? I, I'll do all that. Well, that's also something that men do. It's not something that, that females do. And then because of that, it just, you know, she was persistent, continued. She's going to prove them wrong regardless or not. And she went in. And at, till this day, Alan has had several 8K grade books written about her and has been profiled in textbooks, websites, six schools across California, Oklahoma, Washington, and Texas bear her name for that same reason. And she continues to talk about different things as far as what she knows, what she contributes, her experience. And uh, one of the interviews that I saw about her as far as, uh, you know, what it's like, or, or because everybody wants to name her as the first this, the first person to be, you know, in this board member, the first female Latina astronaut, the first this, the first that. And then she goes, you know what, after a while, it just, it, it, it falls off. But at the end of the day, whenever we were doing the missions, my, like, all my colleagues, they just wanted to make sure that I was able to do the mission. They didn't care if I was this, if I was that. They care if I had their back whenever we were doing this. And it's very, it, it feels related whenever you're like, I, I'm a veteran, so I've been in the military before. And after a while, you, you get that same sense because at the end of the day, sometimes you just want to make sure that you don't care what color, what size, whatever. You just care that your your fellow battle buddy, your 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 soldier has your back, just like you got theirs, you know. And this this is the same feeling that I got because, and you can see how astronauts stay friends for years because for the same reason that you just don't care what you look like, what it whatever it is that you are, as long as you are able to go ahead and do the work that you needed to. Okay, so that way you know you can come back. You're talking about going to space, you know. I do highly recommend if you watch it's, it's it's mostly like a kid type you know guided video but it is on youtube it's called the astronaut with the song for the stars oh and one other thing about her she, she when she was in space she played the played the flute when she was over there i don't know if she was one of the first ones to do it but i thought it was pretty cool that her passion for her passion for playing the flute along with uh being in space and you, you just picture this you know just being out on, on on a spaceship and, and let's say you enjoy playing an instrument and you're just playing your flute and just staring in, the f in into space and seeing earth from another that is round from another angle and just you know imagine the the heightness of your human ex existence to feel like she came from pa immigrant parents her grandparents you know s s trying to get a better life and then she came into this place and now you know she continued to do the work and now I, i'm not saying this is the climax of her of her life but what can be the highest point of you doing something that you would truly love which is playing the flute along with something that you felt passionate about to put the work and the hours in and just be playing the flute playing just whatever song it is something classical just to be like wow i'm really here i really made it so I highly recommend to watch that video on YouTube. It's called The Astronaut with the Song for the Stars. It kind of gives you a better sense of, of, of uh, just real simple. And again, I think it's more geared to kids, but I really like the way that they were reading the book and telling the story about her, how her struggles, how, you know, how the way that the, the races battle, how her mom told because of this and her dad, they knew that they have to raise strong kids because things were not going to be easy, especially being a Latino at, on the, in that time. And uh, she made it happen. So big shout out going out to all females. I I serve in the military. And whenever I was in the military, and actually I was I was deployed, and uh, I saw uh, this one battle buddy of mine. She was a female. And she was, uh, she was on the 50 cal going out outside. We call it outside the wire to uh you know do whatever she was doing um you know carrying out whatever mission she was doing you know and uh, and a lot of the times we forget how strong women are how, how a lot of the times we want to make it seem like they're not just again just like latinos just like every single person we're just human and they're just as capable or not even sometimes stronger than you know sometimes even stronger to, and to do it and sometimes we don't want to give credit for yeah physically sometimes maybe you you know we might be outpowered but it doesn't mean they're not just as capable so salutes all the ladies all the ladies doing believing in yourself contributing to be uh doing whatever it is that you do just like 
Dr. Ellen Ochoa making it all the way to space to get to play the flute and just, you know, enjoying, not giving up. Because even after they told her, no, we're not going to accept you. We're going to pass on you. She went ahead and even became a pilot during that time, learned how to fly. Instead of being discouraged, she continued the work. And eventually, you know, sometimes it doesn't make going doesn't make sense when you're there looking forward. But when then you look back, everything just all the pieces fell into place as far as what she needed to do. And then eventually she became an astronaut, the first Latina to ever do it. And again, big shout out going out to all the women in the world. Continue doing what you do. Continue striving to be a better person, a better human being and contributing to this. And if you're a Latina, again, we uh, as Latinos contribute everything. We've done different episodes all the way from the tortilla to tacos. Taco Tuesday wouldn't be possible without Latinos, Mexicanos especially, and everything else in between. And I guarantee you some of the things you'll be surprised from saving the world, like Mr. Molina did, to everything, everything. We're, we're a little bit of everything. And that's what I'm saying about the, the global Latin factor. We have contributed as Latino and the Latino community to different aspects of everything. We're talking about polit politics. We're talking about food. We're talking about music. Like Despacito, we're talking about, you name it, the economy, billions of dollars, trillions of dollars by the Latino community contributing to the world. And everything else in between, that's what we talk about right here at the Global Latin Factor. This is a little bit of a topic that I am not very familiar with. I'm going to be very honest. Every Lat Not every Lat Okay, so here's another stereotype that I think that is... Uh, it's a stereotype, first of all. So a lot of the stereotype is whatever you make it. So to me, it seems like whenever you're, whenever you are perceived, whenever you look at somebody, right, you're looking at them through your lenses and you're making the determination in your mind, whatever you are seeing, you know. So if you make a stereotype about Latinos, you, you're just making that in your mind. You're processing through and you're filtering it out and that's what you're seeing. But at the end of the day, every Latino doesn't know how to dance. There is a very common like you can say not common knowledge but a common thought that every latino knows how to dance but a lot of them don't and i'm not one of the biggest dancers i can get down with a little rhythm but it doesn't mean that i know how to dance very well not like this guy fernando bujones or boo jones como le dicen en inglés fernando bujones was a ballet dancer was born in march 9 ni march 9th 1955 and died on november the 10th in 2005 so unfortunately the gentleman did pass away not before leaving a legacy as being one of the best dancers ballet dancers that there ever was ever they they give this man all the interviews everything that i looked into they give this man some of the best praises not only as a dancer but as somebody that was just a very kind person like the embodiment of just being generous uh, humble everything in between so I, I I don't watch ballet. I never watched. Never. I mean, maybe a little bit of a, a, a maybe a movie here and there, of little clips. But I never watched it. Never been interested in going. So I did. I did what, watch one of his videos, right? Just to to get acquainted with like what he did. What are they talking about? So have you ever had a sense from somebody that that really knows what they're doing? Like you, you look at a, like a basketball player, like a Michael Jordan, and you like like. They know what they're doing. Like, you have no doubt that they know what they're doing. Like, you can literally have, without even looking at them, they give you the sense of confidence even to the TV that they know what they're doing, what are they doing. So when I, when I was watching Fernando Bujones do his thing, it was just, like, uh, so smooth and, and so, like, like so smooth with it the turns he did he felt like he he was a feather he was so light that the way that he did his turns i don't even know the right ter terminology as far as what he did but he did this amazing beautiful dancing that you can tell and, and for whatever reason you don't understand what he was doing you felt the classical music and you felt this whatever message he was trying to convey to you and, and it was beautiful it was beautiful to watch uh, a, a gentleman a man a ballet dancer doing his thing and just being able to be like, wow, I can see why people really give him all this credit for being one of the best dancers that there was. Fernando Bujo was an American dancer. And okay, so he was born in Florida, but his parents are Cuban. So in a vacation that his parents took over, they visiting some relatives in Florida. And uh, 
he was born there during this time, so he makes makes him an American. But his parents, both of his parents, were Cuban. So there's another Cubano, and uh, he's another Latin factor. Uh, Bujones is uh, credited as one of the best in the 20th century, as well as this as his generation, as far as being one of the best ballet dancers. Fernando Bujones was married to two women in uh, the course of his life. One of them was, and excuse the name because uh, it's a little difficult. Uh, his first marriage was Marcia Kubitschik in 1980. And they uh, did have a daughter. She was actually the daughter of Brazilian president, Juscelino Kubitschek. I'm sorry, bro. I'm messing it up big time. <laughs> Juscelino Kubitschek de Oliveira. He was the president at the time. He married the dancer, ballet dancer Fernando, married the daughter of this man. They later on, they brought forth a daughter. Her name was Alejandra. And then his second married, he married to Maria Arnillas, also a dancer. And she was actually a native of Peru. See the beautiful things we do whenever we uh, get together as far as cultures and, uh, you know, even make babies, beautiful babies, beautiful Cuban and Peruvian babies, like my homie over here, Mexican Salvadorian, you know, we make some beautiful babies. I'm just saying, it's okay. We're just people. Again, we're just trying to relate to you here in the Latin, Latin factor. Not only that we are just, we do the things certain ways the way we do it, but this, at the same time, we just people just striving to be happy in this place striving to be the best that we can doing our own part taking care of our families and not being better there better than anybody else not better than anybody just here to participate as far as humans and again he was born and uh, as i mentioned earlier in uh, florida and he, he grew up in cuba and uh give me one second here so he started classes very early and uh, his his mother after he, he she separated from her father began to practice and uh, he began to get involved in it and early on in, uh, in his childhood he already knew he was going to be you know something special as far as dancing after settling in miami fernando bojones managed to win a scholarship in 1967 to uh, the office and prestige of the new york ballet school of american ballet so again all these certain things i'm not very familiar with as far as ballet but it doesn't take away that he is Latino, and in the world of ballet, they made a movie about this man uh, because he's to them felt like he was so accomplished, and they needed to go ahead and, and relay his message as far as who he was, what he did, and what he contributed. And he not only being a a dancer, but he went on and coach, and then just watching him in action, coaching. After you know his his prime was over and not dancing anymore, then he he goes on and teach and teach the way that you know easily you can just be on your way after you done what you done you you did your part you danced off you did what you did and then after that you'll be on your way you know what so it's okay I'm done what was the reason for it? but no he had a really passion for it because later on he continued to to teach and. Uh, Many years later, he continued to 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 work. But during his craft, though, his he worked really hard and he was passionate about what he do. He was chosen as a representative, but also bagged a gold medal in the international ballet competition held in Berna, Bulgaria, in 1974. Aside from that, he was also awarded a special medal for attending the highest technical achievement due to his performance. Again, I don't know much about ballet. Again, I really don't. But when you watch this man do the things that he did as far as the way he was doing it, it's so fluent, so crisp, so, like, again, it's like a, he was flying on the dance floor, smooth, doing whatever he, the things that he did. And everybody noticed that the things that he was doing compared to everybody else, it was just a special, a, a special person, a special person doing this, you know? Besides, uh, you know, everything that he accomplished numerous awards besides being re-owned and re-announced dancer fernando bujones also served as an artistic director to several dance companies such as the ballet in mississippi in 1993 until it folded and the orlando ballet he also 
collaborated in the international level. So not only was he here in the States a figure of valet, but internationally, we talking about Mexico, Spain, and Brazil, he was also somebody that that worked passionately about carrying ballet and what he knew instead of keeping keeping it to himself and not showing everybody what he knew he contributed to work and contribute to do what he, what he did he was diagnosed with lung cancer before his death but Bujones died in as i mentioned earlier 2005 at the age of 50 from suffering from complications of metallistic melanoma before his death he managed to finish his autobiography entitled so if you're more interested in knowing more about him his autobiography is called fernando bujones and autobiography you can check that out and get more of an idea if you never heard of this latino dancer if you're into dancing if you haven't seen anybody that you feel like is a dancer too that could like maybe influence you or motivate you or like no, no i don't know anybody like dancers latinos so I, i'm not gonna do it like there is fernando bujones that did his thing and has his own bio, autobiography and if you go look at it it might inspire you to do because there's actually dancers not just reggaetoneros not just break dancers not just everything else but actual classic ballet dancers which you can if it's something that you like can go and look and see the things that we have contributed as far as being a Latino in ballet. A lot of, I mean, again, maybe I'm generalizing as far as, it, but I don't think a lot of Latinos know much about or care to know about ballet, but there is a, a group and people that do care about this. And one of the, us Latinos, our people, our gente, was one of the contributors to being considered one of the best that ever done it. That's another one. So again, the final thought on this one f is that it just because we just don't know about a certain subject, right? Like myself, ballet, but that doesn't mean we can't appreciate certain things that other people do that we might not understand fully, but it doesn't mean we can't be open-minded to look at what they did. And then again, when I looked at this man doing whatever performance he was doing, it was like, you get that sense the reason why a lot of people give him so much credit and praise him so much as far as the things he did as a latino a cubano because he really was passionate about what he did and it's another area that we contribute that we might have even forgot never mentioned never heard about it but fernando Ugones was a latino that shaped and most likely influenced a lot of the ballet that happens to this day all right so remember, again, we're just the spice in this global melting pot that we call the world. We're just here to participate. And that's all we are, a person just like you. See you on the next episode. This is the Global Latin Factor. I'm your host, Crispin Valentin. Until the next one.